Welcome to this SEO Library webinar, Hold Maintenance for Your Users. I'd like to go ahead and thank everybody for attending the webinar today. My name is Nicole Brown, and I will be the instructor. If anyone has any questions throughout our session, please feel free to use the chat box, and when we get a minute, I will address those. The session today is about learning how to prevent your patron's holds from expiring, or really just trying to figure out why they're not being filled. First off, I would like to know if anyone already receives a monthly report set up by SEO for holds that will expire in the next 30 days. You can go ahead and type your answer in the chat box. I do see everyone's responses in the chat box. It looks like the report today is going to be something new that everyone's going to be learning. After the reviewing the class today, if your library chooses to have this report set up, SEO can have it delivered to whichever login you prefer. It can be a CERC, tech, or manager. For today, we will be looking at a report that's been set up for SEO test patrons whose holds will expire within the next 30 days. So let's go ahead and open up workflows. We will need to go to the Reports Templates tab, and we will click on Finished Reports. And click OK. And don't be alarmed here. Uh, my login does show a little more than what you guys will have to worry about. The report that I am looking for is called Nicole's Test SEO List Holds expires in 30 days. So I'm going to go ahead and sort my list here by report name just so I can find it a little quicker. And go down to the ends. And there we have it and click view. And OK. Now, don't be alarmed when this report comes up. Oh, we need to click OK in these boxes. There will show a lot of information, but this is in an Excel spreadsheet, so we can manipulate it any way you want. And we can get rid of whatever columns we don't want and keep which ones we do. Uh, if we go ahead and I can scroll across here, you can see that there is a lot of information, but like I said, we do not have to keep all of it. Uh, we just can keep what is needed. So let's go ahead and get rid of the things that we do not need. And to do that, you can click on the column header and right click delete. Uh, we do not need the date it was created. This column here will be the date the hold was placed, and this column will be the date the hold expires. So those are two good ones we would probably want to keep. Get rid of some more of these. Uh, I think I will go ahead and get rid of the author column. Uh, we will be looking at the record and workflow, so we'll be able to see this information later. We'll go ahead and keep title. There's no need for call number. This is actually our item ID, so we will have to go back and to the Home tab and change the number or general two numbers so we can actually be able to view it and make our column just a little bit bigger so that it fits in there and reduce our decimal down two places. This next column is going to be what location my item is in. This will be helpful because this will be a kind of a determining factor as to maybe why my hold is not getting filled. We will need to change our patron barcode to number. 
and reduce the decimal two spots here also. And get rid of some more of this. Well, I'm sorry, this one needs to leave it. And we need to keep the patron name here. In fact, I don't think we need anything else back in there. So let's just go back and look at the report here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first item today. To do so, we will need to copy the item ID and take it back to Workflows. So I, um, for today, the first item I want to look at is number six here. And I can see the title is going to be World Book International. I've got my barcode. I know that the item is going to be in Mending. I've got my user ID and the patron name. So I know Dover is waiting for the item. So let's go ahead and do Control C to copy the barcode. And let's bring up workflows. We can go ahead and the close report tab and open up CERC and click on the item search wizard. We will need to change the index to show item ID and put your cursor back in the search for box and hit control B. This is going to place my barcode in the search box and click search. It opens up the bib record of the item we wanted to look at. I can see down here that it is the World Book International. So let's open up the call number item maintenance tab and I can see all the information about the item and figure out why the hold is not being filled for Dover. I can see that there is only one item and that status is in Mending. So let's go ahead and look at the holds and verify who my patron is. It does say Dover. Let's move this over just a tad so we can see what's going on over here. I can see the hold was placed on November 23rd. I can also see that it is going to expire within the 30 days. It will expire August 30th. Now let's go back and take a look here at the item. It is showing and mending. And if I take a look down below here in this information, it's saying that the last activity on the item was on 12 4 of 2013. So that tells me this item has been in mending since December 4th. Therefore, I'm pretty sure that Dover is not going to get this item. So I will just go ahead and let this hold expire. There's no need to go ahead and extend the due date. Let's go ahead and look at example number two. I went ahead and grabbed information off of that report so that we don't have to keep flipping screens. We can just look at it here with the item ID. And that number is 399-1300-170-5408. And this item is called Fern Golly, the DVD. The patron who is waiting on it, which we can find here in the call number item maintenance, and it also showed on the report. Remember, the report will give you the patron's name and their barcode number. It will give you your item and the item number. I can see that the only owning copy is in lost assumed status. If I go to the holes tab, let's just make this a little bigger this way. I can see my patron was Mary Lou Johnson. I can see that they had placed the hold November 4th, 2013, so they've been waiting on it for a while. That's another thing I wanted to mention. Um, these holds, when your patron places a hold, they are good for nine months, and then they will expire unless you do extend them or figure out why they're not getting filled. In this case, the hold's going to expire August 11, 2014. So if we go back over and look at the item, we can see that this item is in lost assumed status. 
and it has had no activity since November 15, 2013. So I would assume that this item will not be filling this patron's hold, so I would let this one expire also. Does anybody have any questions so far? It looks like everybody is on board so far, so let's go ahead and look at another example. I've got a barcode here. And this is a title called Everything I Need to Know I Learned from a Little Golden Book. So let's click on the call number tab. Look here, we've got all kinds of available copies. We're looking down through here, we can see there's one, two, three available right from the beginning. We've got some that's checked out, one that's in hold status. But if you look at the one that we entered, it is highlighted and says in transit. So if we click on the circ info tab, we can determine where this item is headed to. If you go to the bottom, it does say that it's in transit to SEO, which is my library. And it's coming from Weston, which is the owning library. And the reason being for a hold. And I can see that they sent this clear back January 23rd of 2014. So let's check out the holds tab. I know that my patron is Mount Vernon and Knox County. And I know that because I got that information from my report. So let's take a look. It does say Mount Vernon. does show that it was placed October 30th, and it's going to expire the 6th. So we really need to determine what to do with this hold before it expires. In this case, I would call the owning library and have them double check their shelves. January is a long time for the item to be in transit, so maybe it got left or accidentally put back on the shelf. Um, maybe it truly is lost in cargo. Uh, I would ask them to check their shelves, and if they are not able to locate the item, I would ask them to put it in a status that they use of maybe missing or lost or whatever that library prefers. And I would go ahead, if they can find it, then that would be wonderful. You can ask them to check it in, and it will detail for your patron, and the whole will be fine. If they cannot find it, we would have to cancel the hold and replace it for our patron because there are other available copies that can fill this request. This was a good example. Let's take a look at another one here. We've got a barcode from our report. Monitor the story of the legendary Civil War ironclad and the man whose invention changed the course of history. Uh, there are available copies. We can see that. However, there is one in missing. I know from the report my patron is Gigi Welch. And let's take a look at the holds and make sure that's who it's showing. Yep, there she is. I can see it was placed on July 29th, and it will expire August 1st. She needs something done today, or she's not going to get her hold because that's tomorrow. Looking down through here, oh, one thing we need to look at, too, so be careful how much you collapse because we almost missed something very important. One thing I was hiding here is this thing called level hold. I see here that Miss Gigi had placed a copy level hold, and she is wanting this specific copy, and if it's in missing, she's never going to get it. That's probably a good reason why we don't recommend that you place a copy level hold. In this case, we can cancel Gigi's hold and replace it with a title level hold, and any of these last three remaining copies can fill her request.
And last but not least, I have one example here. Another one we had got from the report. And it is the new Invincible book by Diana Palmer. Doesn't look like there's too many copies here. We've got three copies. I know one's in transit. And it's pretty legit. It has a day, date of 729, so it is on its way to Deschler to fill a hold. I can see one's checked out and one's in hold status. My patron is Frenchie Bond. I got that from my report. Immediately opening up, I see there are 77 holds on this title. And I'm kind of already guessing that the reason this hasn't been filled is because there's only three available copies and there's 77 requests on this item. Just to make sure, I can always click the username field and it's going to put all of my patrons in alphabetical order so it would be easier for me to find her. And I can see Frenchie right here. So now that I have her highlighted, I want to scoot this screen back over so I can see all of my information over here. I can see she had it placed when it expires. Everything looks great there. Scroll this back over. She's got a title level hold, so she's not waiting on a specific copy. I would say this is just a legitimate hold that it's taking a while to get filled because there's so many requests on three copies. So in this case, we will need to extend her hold. And to do that, we need to open up the holds group and click on Modify Holds for User. And Frenchie is still in here. You can either click there or you can put her barcode in the user ID field. I'm just going to go ahead and click. I can see here in the title, there's the title I want. I see it does expire tomorrow. I don't want that to happen. So if I go ahead and put a check mark in the modify box and go down here and click modify at the bottom of the screen, it opens up a new window where I can change a couple different things. You can suspend a hold, unsuspend a hold. You can change your pickup location. But today we're worrying about the hold and when it expires. So I've got the expire field here. So if I click the gadget beside it, it opens up a calendar and I can actually pick what date I want this hold to expire at now. So I know it expires tomorrow, August 1st. Rule of thumb here, we normally change the expire date from three to six months. So in that case, I think I'm going to go ahead and do six months. So I can go out to It's going to put us to January of 2015. I've got the first highlighted. You can click whatever day you want it on. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on the first and click OK. My new date goes in the expires box. You click OK. You can see it also changes on her list now. From this screen, if she had more holds, you could you could choose to do more, modify more. You have the option to go on and modify another user's hold or just close this window. And that's what we're going to do today. Go ahead and close. All right, I want to go ahead and take this time to open the chat box for any questions you all might have. I want to let you guys know that if you would or do want this report set up for your library to let you know of your patrons holds that will expire in the next 30 days. You can make a ticket with us or call and ask for the ILS department or a library too. And we can get that set up for you. All you would have to do is determine which login you would want it sent to. Or you can type in the chat box today and we can Go ahead and get that set up for you.
that concludes the webinar for today. I want to go ahead and let everyone know when leaving the class today, a survey will open up in your browser. Please take the time to complete it. It will help us with future presentations. If you think of any questions after the class or any questions at all, feel free to email us at our support site at support at servingeveryohioan.org. You can also see future classes that may be coming available through our website on the event calendar. That would be the seolibrary.eventbrite.com. And be sure to watch for this video and any other recorded webinars on your YouTube site on our YouTube site at www.youtube.com slash user slash SEO library. And thank you again for attending today's webinar.